Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name's Richard, and I'm sitting on my grandstand airport early in the morning. Gonna take an early morning flight, and what we're gonna do is follow this. We're gonna take off from Grand Strand, go a couple of miles out this way, go out to this intersection called Murphy, which is a, a fix into the uh, Horry County. And then we'll go to the initial approach fix uh, to the ILS 18 of uh, Myrtle Beach Air Force. Uh, Myrtle Beach used to be an Air Force base. Um, and we'll do a nice ILS. Okay. I believe we are ready. And checklist is complete. And we're set to go. Okay, going to release the brakes and power slowly. Always fun to take off in the um, old dark 30 in the morning. Okay, airspeed's alive, approaching 59, just gently coming off the runway. Keeping the nose down. Okay. And we're good to go. We'll put the heading bug and the altitude bug on. Because it's pitch black out there. We're heading into into the middle of nowhere here. So let's uh, let's get a better view of this. Okay, 500 feet, 93 knots. I'm going to pull the um, RPM back to 2400. As you can see over there on the right, 25. There's good enough. And now climb to 2000 feet. And that little buzzer was the fact that we got 1,000 feet remaining. Okay, I'm going to pull the manifold pressure back just a little. Get it off the stop. Level off at 2,000 feet here. Autopilot will automatically level me off. It's almost time to turn. What, we'll use this view for now. Okay, you can see right here, we're almost getting up to the point at which we turn. Alright, let's go back to this view. Let's start our turn. to a heading of three twelve three one two there we go and we're leveled off time to pull the power back a bit more don't need that Flying, I, I prefer 120 uh, to maybe 115, and that'll probably mean about uh, 20 inches on the um, manifold pressure. Okay, we're now in route. I am using four flight, four flight, and uh, the um, uh, GPS are in fact uh, the same, but I'm not going to use GPS for navigation, although um, let's see here. Yeah, let's, let's look over here. 
Okay, I'm pretty much straight on the on the course there, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Let's take a look at what's outside. Wow, absolutely nothing. Okay, we're in the middle of nowhere uh, near the beach of South, of South Carolina. Alright, so let's see what we got to do here. Um, tell you what, let's pull up the approach plate. How about that? There's the approach plate. Okay, so we're going way out here somewhere and we're going to come in. We're going to fly to this UXDEP intersection and come into the ILS uh, localizers 109.5. And uh, other than that, we probably got everything we need to know. Okay, so I got 109.5 in standby mode right here, and uh, let's see, okay, so we got, uh, let me go back to this view, so this says we've got uh, a distance of about 12.6, ETA of about 5 minutes, we're on course, ground speed 128, and things are looking fine. One of the things I tricks I learned today was you can turn this floodlight up and down. Okay, I prefer it up. You can see why. It, it allows you to look around, look down here, see what all you got going and uh, look out there which means you can't see diddly and here we go another trick of mine I always like to mention is very often when I'm flying um, this is going to be a VFR flight I'll be using these to tell me my altitude and airspeed airspeed and altitude uh, but I will be using this if we're getting into any IFR conditions. Not forecast for you today yet, but we shall see. Okay, 122 nautical miles per hour knots. Uh, this is a really sharp turn, but I'm not too worried about it. All I want to do is get close enough to get on the localizer here. And we will uh, be close enough after we make this turn to lock in the localizer. In fact, it'll probably lock in um, uh, even just before we get to the turn. I will be using the uh, the uh, autopilot to fly the localizer today. Um, I treat um, night uh, VFR as IFR because you can't see a horizon. Okay, so this is going to be night VFR, and my book is IFR. look at the approach plate again just to make sure we got everything so 177 the inbound course will that should be automatically put in when we um, select the localizer uh, 2,000 feet for the initial approach fix we'll intercept the glide slope at 2,000 feet come on down and um, Minimums today, I wouldn't go anything lower than 
this 560, 601 circling. You know, if we were in real life, our conditions, I might do something different, but uh, that's good to know. Don't see anything on the map. I think everything looks good. Okay. We'll stay at this speed until after we make the turn. The leg, the next leg. Let me see what the next leg is. The next leg is uh, eight miles long, and um, won't take us too long to get there. Looks like about four minutes to get there. I'm reading four flight correctly. So I'll give us plenty of time to get set up in the localizer. Matter of fact, we won't wait till we get to here to uh, intercept the localizer. As soon as the localizer is locked on and clear, we'll jog over here a little bit, turn on the um, uh, turn the nav button. Um, and the approach button on to let it lock on the localizer well before we get to the initial approach fix. Okay, as you can see here, we're going to um, uh, I'm not going to go swinging way out here and then back in. Um, the uh, next heading is 178. So as this gets a little closer here, I'm looking at my four flight. Its next heading says 178. The runway is one, uh, 18, so that makes a lot of sense. So I'll wait till we get a little closer and um, use my heading bug to change to 178. Um, I think now's a good time to do that. All right, here we go. Heading bug to 178. One seven eight. there we go. GPS says 185, we'll see who's right. It, it's a good confirmation, that's close enough. Uh, 185, 178, they're all close enough. Okay, so I'm going to put in the localizer, 109.5, see if we receive it. And it looks like we do. And it looks like it's over here somewhere. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn, give a small intercept to the localizer like that. And then we're going to turn on the nav button. You can see how that arms the localizer right there. And uh, we'll turn on the approach button, which will arm the uh, glide slope. Okay, so localizer is locking on, as you can see. And the glide slope will lock on when we get closer. So what just happened there, the heading bug finally let go and let the localizer took over. Localizer decided that 
the intercept I have was close but it liked a few degree heading change so that's just fine with everybody in this airplane okay so this DME here is the airport uh, the uh, KMYR the Myrtle Beach Airport and um, we will uh, see what's next okay 16 miles out I can go ahead and do start my slowdown my RPM uh, the prop lever doesn't need to change it's 2400 I'm going to pull the throttle back slowly to um, get my airspeed uh, down to where I can put a flap down the white tape as you just see coming up here there's the white tape uh, that's where you can put a flap down One more look at the approach plate. Okay, initial approach fix is 12.6 miles. Right there. So that's a good thing to know right now. Okay. Note that the initial approach fix to final approach fix is about uh, 6 miles. And um, from the initial approach fix to the final approach fix I'll have to put two clicks of flaps in and we're getting closer airspeed is coming down a little too slow for me I'm going to pull the manifold pressure back by pulling the throttle back to about 14 there a little less 13.7 will do nicely so we can slow down to something less than uh, 90 knots Actually, I guess 92 knots, but I just use 90 knots as a round number. Okay, watching, um, you can see the airplane's getting close to the initial approach fix. 12.6 is coming up. And by the time we get there we'll be below 90 knots okay localizer looks pretty well locked in Okay, we put a flap down anytime. I'm going to go ahead and put the first uh, click of flaps in, get the airplane stabilized. Okay, here we go. I'm going to be ready here to um, push the throttle up enough to hold uh, somewhere between 75 and 80. Now once the flap is down, the power does have to go in, and I'm pushing it in now to try to hold around 75. Looks like we got a slight tailwind. I'm not too worried about that. Winds are light and variable on the runway. So we're okay. Okay, final approach fix is um, roughly seven miles. So starting um, below 10 nautical miles, I can put the second click of, click of flaps in. Airspeed's getting a little lower than I want. I'm going to push the throttle back up to hold 
when we're closer to 75 as I get ready to put in the second click of flaps. Airspeed's climbing a little bit. I know how to fix that. I'm going to put a flap down. Okay, if I can click a flaps going in, getting ready to hold, uh, add, air, add a bit of power to hold the airspeed 70 to 75. Okay, airspeed. He's at 70 and climbing slowly. That's a good place. Okay, ball is dropping. How about that? Right on cue. There's the ball getting ready to drop. As soon as it locks on, uh, when the ball drops, gets to here, uh, the GPS will click in, the altitude will disappear. Altitude hold disappear. I'll be ready to pull the throttle back to hold 65 to 70 on the final approach. Which also means we can probably see a runway out there. Oh, look at a beautiful runway out there. Wow. It's, uh, uh okay, Vassy lights aren't quite where, or Pappy lights aren't quite where they should be. And we'll just wait for the uh, descent to begin. As we begin the descent, the GPS just clicked in. I'm going to pull the throttle back, okay, because we're going to get about a 400 foot per minute rate of descent. And I want the um, airspeed just below 70, 65 to 70 in that range. Sixty-nine. Uh, you can you can just watch the airspeed here, and just tap in the power two or three uh, points on the manifold pressure, and it it'll you can hold it pretty quickly. We'll look out at the runway again for a minute. Things are looking fine. All right, circling was about 600 feet. Um, probably going to let it fly closer to the runway and uh, take control um, and land somewhere less than a mile. I note that uh, the heading I've got, and let me. Um, move the heading bug to there. I note that the heading I've got does have a slight intercept for some crosswind. I'll take that under advisement as I get ready to land here. Okay, 68 is great. I'm going to 12.7 on the manifold pressure. I'm going to pull it back just a hair. Try to get it to about 12.7. Uh, well, that'll do right there, 12.1. Airspeed's coming down slowly. I'm coming down slowly. Very nice uh, runway to land at. Don't overshoot, you're in the ocean. <laughs> Okay. Here I want to be 60, um, three, uh, between 63 and 60, so I've pulled the manifold pressure back slightly 
to uh, get it closer to 63. Okay. Pappy lights look good, too white, too red, on course on glide path, thanks to a very nice um, autopilot in this airplane. Alright, we're below 65, going to watch closely not to get, um, in fact I'm, I'm going to go ahead and touch in the power here a little bit, a couple of points, and hold 63. Real two mile good. final runway one eight. Okay, that's four flight telling me two mile final. I think I'll just leave this view for a while. Uh, one final check to make sure. Yes, flaps are down. Every engine instrument is in the green, and we're ready to land. Sixty-two knots, and this is when I start watching this much closer for my airspeed than this tape. It's always easier to see that while you're trying to land. And here is the uh, uh, next thing I'm waiting for is uh, four flight to tell me we're at 500 feet, and you can tell about very easily right with this um, that we're going to be okay. Airspeed's the most important, so this is much, much easier to see than looking way down here. Airspeed's holding perfectly, 62. So, reviewing my last uh, things to do here, I'm going to hold on to the uh, yoke and I'll click 500. one 500 feet thank you and I will click one click of um, a nose up trim to turn off the autopilot and then um, as I'm getting ready to flare I'll pull the manifold pressure back to from 12 and a half there to about 11 and a half and do a nice slow uh, flare to land. One of the more difficult things with this airplane at night is you got a pretty lousy landing light. Okay, You can see all the lights are on, landing taxi, position strobe, all that's on, <laughs> but <laughs> you only there's one landing light on the, I think it's the left wing, and that's not a whole lot to land by. Tell you what, I think I might even turn that down a little bit so I can see a little better out there. Okay, here we go. Autopilot coming off, throttle coming back slightly. Nice smooth round out, look down the end of the runway. Okay, good two-wheel landing, nose is going down, steering toward the center of the runway. I always like to hear that little rumble, I hope you can hear it, of the nose wheel touching down. Okay, gently apply a tap of brakes. power.
Okay, that's my technique for landing night or day. Don't pull it to idle until you're ready to stop. <laughs> nice landing, Richard. Thank you. All right, let's park it right here. Okay, um, I hope you enjoyed that. I did. Thank you for watching. A lot more videos coming up on this airplane.